Hello everyone, I'm Lindsay Dreyer, I'm one of the registered dietitians at Vident Lifestyle Medicine Clinic and happy National Nutrition Month. March is National Nutrition Month and each week we are going to be sharing a recipe, a tip, information about our services um, to you guys to kind of talk through what we do on a regular basis. So I'm going to be sharing with you a really easy, quick recipe that has a lot of flavor. The theme for National Nutrition Month this year is celebrating a world of flavor. So a lot of what we're going to be doing is imparting flavor in different ways other than just by salt or sodium. Um, so this recipe has a couple different spices it, in it. And this is something that you can make on a Sunday or at the beginning of the week in your crock pot and either freeze the leftovers or have for lunches throughout the week. So this is going to be my vegetarian curry in the crock pot. So let's get started. Okay, to start this vegetarian curry recipe, I'm first going to plug in my crock pot. You can also probably use an Instapot or one of the fancier machines they have nowadays. Um, it's just going to be a difference in cooking time. So I have my crock pot on low, and this is going to take about two to three hours in the crock pot. It depends um, what kind of vegetables you're putting in it, and we'll talk about that a little later. So to get started, the base of my curry is going to be sweet potatoes and broccoli. Again, you can use cauliflower, you can add in onions, you can add in other stuff as well. I'm just doing what for me is my preference. So I have some um, broccoli florets and I have a sweet potato cut up and I'm just gonna finish cutting up these couple of things. So I buy the crowns of broccoli and then break them down that way. So we're just gonna cut off the stems now, the important part of this step with the broccoli and the sweet potato is we want it relatively the same size. It's not going to be perfect, but if one is really small and the rest are really large florets, then you're going to have some that are mushy and then some that are just done. So with anything with cooking, whether you're roasting, whether you're um, putting things in the crock pot, the qu quantity and the quality of size matters in terms of keeping things very consistent. Okay. And then same with the sweet potato to break that down. Now, in terms of the other vegetables, like I said, you can use cauliflower um, if you want. I've used that before in this recipe as well. It's kind of whatever you have around the house um, and stuff, stuff that's going to be able to hold on while it's cooking for a long period of time. So I'm going to break down the sweet potato. I'm going to cut it in half, cut it in half. Make sure you have a sharp knife when you're working with a sweet potato because they're a little firmer. I did peel these first. I'm just gonna cut this and cut it in half. So like, like I said, we're gonna keep things relatively the same size. They're not gonna be perfect, but they're gonna be pretty close. Okay, I'm gonna discard that. And the awesome thing about this recipe is this is the only prep is cutting up these two vegetables, really. Um, and if you want to make this even easier, if this was even too much prep for you, you could buy already cut up sweet potatoes and already um, already processed broccoli florets. So don't feel like this um, part is hold. If you're not good with prepping, don't feel like that would be holding you back. It would be more expensive, um, but it's also another way to go. Okay, now I have my sweet potato cut up and I have my broccoli cut up. The thing about cooking that's awesome is recipes will tell you like two cups of cut up broccoli or two cups of sweet potato. Realistically, you have to adjust the cooking time, but I, I'm not measuring. This is, this is probably somewhere around um, two and a half cups of each possibly. So I'm going to throw this in the crock pot. And the best thing about this is from here on out, it's pretty much just dumping things in. So I have a can of drained and rinsed uh, chickpeas that I'm going to throw in as well. This is going to be one of our protein sources in this recipe. So just one can, again, rinsed and drained. And then my other protein source is going to be a half a cup of quinoa. I have the tricolor quinoa here. Um, and this is our complete protein source in this recipe. Quinoa is so versatile. Again, you can put it in a lot of soups and a lot of different stews and you really won't, it won't make a huge taste difference, but it absorbs flavor really well. So this will puff up and be a lot more than just that half a cup. So we're gonna add that in. Then in terms of some of my um, flavorings, I have tamari here. Tamari is essentially just gluten-free soy sauce for those who have to be gluten-free or those who prefer to be. 
um, this is what you would probably lean towards. Or I would recommend for people with hypertension or who have to be mindful of their sodium intake, look for the low sodium soy sauce instead. Okay, after the tamari, I am going to put in, and that was three teaspoons of tamari. You could also put in miso too. Um, miso is a, a thicker paste if you have that around. I don't generally have miso laying around, so I'm just going to use a teaspoon more of tamari instead of the miso paste. Then I'm going to add in a can of diced tomatoes. Again, these aren't flavored with anything. They're just diced up tomatoes. And the good thing about this recipe too is it's pretty budget friendly because a lot of this stuff is canned and a lot of the spices are, are pretty regular spices. They're nothing out of the ordinary. And the vegetables, again, fresh vegetables don't really cost a whole lot. Um, so in terms of the base of this, I'm going to use coconut milk for this. Um, obviously unsweetened. You can use either low fat or regular fat coconut milk. It kind of depends what you prefer. Usually I do one in one. I do one um, full fat and one low fat just to balance it out. So I'm just going to dump this can in. We'll need to scoop this out because it tends to get stuck. And so this is a obviously with the this curry, it's a coconut based curry. And this adds a lot of richness to it. For for me, I like to do meals that are going to keep me full. If they're mostly vegetable and um, plant-based proteins, I still want them to keep me full. Um, and with all this fiber and with this fat, it's going to help keep me full. And I know people are worried about the saturated fat from the coconut milk. And if that is, again, a concern for you, then I would look for the low-fat option. Or you can always do substitute one can of coconut milk for some vegetable stock as well for the rest of it. So the one of the major spices I'm using in this recipe, this is going to be a teaspoon of ground turmeric. You can also get fresh turmeric. Fresh turmeric actually comes in a root like ginger and you could peel it and grate it. Um, you would use more fresh than you would dried. I'm using a teaspoon of dried, so I'd probably use more like a tablespoon of fresh. Turmeric is great, one, because it gives a be it's a beautiful color, and two, it helps in terms of, it has some health benefits in terms of anti-inflammatory, and I know when people hear anti-inflammatory, that's a confusing term. So in terms of inflammation, we, acute inflammation is okay, what protects our, our body against um, intruder cells, but chronic inflammation is what we're trying to avoid long term. So using some spices that are more anti-inflammatory and foods that are anti-inflammatory can hopefully naturally help with that. Okay, then I'm going to add my garlic clove and I'm just going to mince it with my garlic press right into here. Again, I'm using one big clove. You could use two smaller cloves. And this recipe will be up for you on with the clip. I, again, sometimes measure things, sometimes don't. I kind of taste as I go. So look at how beautiful this is so far. And then um, one of the last flavor profiles I'm going to be adding to this is the ginger root. So you can obviously get um, ginger powder or you can get minced, minced ginger in a container in the store near the herbs. I personally like the ginger root. Um, it's fresh. It's easy to buy. Um, most grocery stores have them. So this is what a ginger root looks like. So there are two ways you can peel these. You can obviously use a peeler if you want to. A spoon actually works really well in terms of ginger. So you just use the top top of the spoon and go down and it actually peels pretty well in terms of if you didn't have a peeler. Sometimes you got to find and use what you have or you could also use a knife. So sometimes what I do if I'm in a rush is I just kind of cut down the side like if you were peeling um, like a cucumber, the cucumber skin off. Sometimes I just cut down the side and the ginger root is almost never even. It's, it has different parts to it. So you don't want to waste too much. So the spoon would be a way in which you wouldn't waste as much. But just for time's sake, I'm just going to kind of peel off some of this. And it smells amazing. Ginger is also an anti-inflammatory um, root ingredient, herb. Um, and ginger is also great in tea and stuff like this. So you, if you have any leftover, you can steep this in some hot water with some lemon for tea. That would be a great use for it. 
So I am going to take this whole root right here and I'm gonna use a microplane. You can also use a box grater if you have one of those bigger ones. And I'm just going to add this in. Again, I'm not measuring per se. I'm kind of eyeballing the ginger. I personally like a, a stronger ginger flavor. If you're a little more sensitive to it, you might want to start with probably around a half a teaspoon and work your way up. I'm probably doing more like a full teaspoon of braided ginger. And once this is cooking, you'll it will smell incredible. So after I have the grated ginger in there, that's it. That's, that's everything that's in there for right now. So I do, I'm going to salt and pepper at the end. If you let the longer things cook, the more salt you end up having to add because the flavor kind of melts together. So I like to salt at the end because I tend to add less. Well, along the way, I tend to add more. And then with the salt and pepper, the last thing is going to be crushed red pepper to get it, give it a little zing. That's going to be per taste. I'm not the biggest fan of spice, so I tend to do only a couple of dashes of this where someone... Who likes it more spicy may want to add closer to a half a teaspoon um, so these are the three i'm going to add at the end so i'm gonna this is on low i'm gonna let this cook i'm gonna mix it up first so everything's kind of mixed together and sometimes halfway through depending on the thickness of it sometimes i add some water or some broth um, i like it a little thicker but we are going to let this cook for about two to three hours and then we're going to see where we are. Because I'm using this, for, I'm going to reheat this throughout the week. I don't like it super mushy. So I kind of tend to undercook mine a little bit um, just until the veggies are, are slightly tender. Because I'm going to reheat it as I um, go through the week anyway. So now that that's mixed together, I'm going to put this lid on and let it go. And then when we come back after a few hours, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, after three hours, this has been cooking. Look at how good that looks. I stirred it about every half an hour and the vegetables are just tender. And so this will be perfect for when I reheat it because it's not too mushy. And I like it thick like this. If you want it more like soupy, then you would just add some stock or some water and let it cook out a little bit. I'm going to season it. Now, with some salt and pepper to taste. And then, once this is all set, you can turn off the heat and let it cool down a little bit. And then this will be good in the fridge for about four to five days. And then I usually just freeze the rest. So if I have a big batch like this, I'll freeze half and then use the rest throughout the week. Okay, and then I'm adding the red pepper flakes. Just a few shakes. And then we're just going to stir it up and I'm going to let it cool down and then I'm going to pack it up. But try this recipe at home and you'll see how much flavor it has without it being bogged down with a lot of salt um, because of the spices that we use. So I hope you enjoy and happy National Nutrition Month.